So what made everybody come to this right now? Is it, is it Gunner or is it actually like watching Gunner. people? <laughs> Raise, show of hands. Who's here because of Gunner or because, because of Gunner? Show of hands. <laughs> and because of Chili. Show of hands. Great, but I think I think we should bring up Gunner here. Gunner, please. Sit right down. So, if you guys have any questions for Gunner, if you guys have any questions for the, let's, okay, if you guys have any questions for Gunner, now is a great time to ask them. Good. No questions. Okay. Perfect. Okay. We're all going home. Yeah. That didn't give us. That gave us plenty of time. Uh, yeah, what, what, I know you got something. You got a new movie coming out, possibly. I, I heard something. You read something about online. Is that possible? No, 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 no. The last movie I did was Chainsaw 3D. Yep. Um, and there are a couple of movies in the works, but what does that mean? I mean, I was supposed to shoot one in June and another in July, and the last I heard was the one in June went into rewrite, uh, which means. The option on it expires here in another month or two, which is great because I've already got someone else who wants it. Uh, and then the one in July, the last I heard is in June, I, I called the director and said, what's the schedule? And he said, we're on our way right now to Vancouver to, look, to scout locations. I thought it was a little late. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and, uh, so, and obviously now it's late enough that they're not going to be shooting in Vancouver. Right, right. So I don't know what's, what's going on with those. I'll be starting on another book here uh, in a week. I get I have one more appearance, and then I'm just going to lock the door and uh, cook real chili <laughs> <laughs> and start on the next nice. next book. Thanks. Are you from Mount Desert Island? Or yes, I'm yeah. to Mount Desert Island. Excuse me. I'm to Mount. Desert. Too. Where are you from, Maine? Well, I mean, I mean, you know, well, well uh, yeah. I live there now. Good. Do you have family that does construction up there? No. No. Okay. I, I, I didn't think you looked like. You can't remember the house. Well, I'm not the angry. Are you far? How are you? Southwest? Are you northwest? Or? <laughs> Can you just give us your address? <laughs> 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 I mean, as far as like your like, you know, tourist trap bullshit or like good food. Oh, well, I'm not in Bar Harbor, so okay. I'm, okay. Not so close to, so I'm not close to the tourist trap, and I'm not good. I'm not close to good food. Uh, so you have to make your own good food, basically. Yeah, because the closest restaurant thinks garlic mashed potatoes is good food. <laughs> it can be. Yeah, it could be when they put a very small amount of garlic. <laughs> but now it's like, hey, gourmet. <laughs> have you been to any of these restaurants here? No, no, I, because I never get to Portland, actually. I mean, I was in Portland at the beginning of, of um, September and for three days, and I, I stayed at the the Howard Johnson's in South Portland. And, and, uh, they have garlic mashed potatoes at that Howard Johnson's? No, no, but I ate just whatever the closest thing was. So that meant, I, I did eat in some restaurant that I don't even know the name of that was. Denny's? <laughs> it was very overpriced yeah. and empty. It was empty. a PT show yeah. Yeah. And, and they had garlic mashed on the yeah. menu, but I didn't know where it Otherwise it was like, you know, uh, uh, Dunkin' Donuts for their, yeah for their sausage and egg sandwich or something. I, do. I haven't eaten in, in a real restaurant in Portland for a long time. Is chili something for you that you've been making for a really long time, or is it something kind of recent, is something a background? Yeah, I've made chili for a long time. Yeah. And uh, in Texas, we used to eat chili all the time. Uh, we had a whole thing no about- No beans in Texas, right? No, no, no. Yeah. What you do is you cook pinto beans on the side, yeah. not kidney beans. You cook pinto beans on the side, and that's where you put the real hot stuff. You put the jalapenos and the pintos, and then we'd watch the Cowboys lose, and we'd... <laughs> <laughs> well, that was back in the 70s. And, then, and you'd have a bowl of chili and a bowl of, bean, bowl of beans, and they didn't touch. I mean, that was just the way we were used to eating the chili. Yeah. That's a common theme in Texas, right? Things aren't supposed to touch each other. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's bigger, but... Yeah, don't touch, don't touch <laughs> it. <laughs> 
somebody once said, of course there, there's beans in chili. Chili con carne means chili with beans. <laughs> Obviously. No, I know it does. <laughs> Questioning Leatherface? No, well, no. Just for those of you, it means peppers with meat. Yeah. Yeah. So that's sort of what I give as the. So I have trouble. I mean, I know I'm an old party, but I have trouble like accepting the idea of vegetarian chili because that's an oxymoron. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But on the other hand, there are vegetarian chilies that I think are really good. I agree with you. It's just hard to think of them as chili. Right. They're not yeah. chili. And there are a lot of things that, like I'm sure on this, in in this selection, a lot of a lot of chilies that I would enjoy eating, but it's just hard for me to think of them as real chili. Well, because they're not actually chili. They're, they're good, they're, they are what they are. Yeah, yeah. Well, some of these, I, I think that um, a lot of the, the, some of the chili we had today is almost like, the, like, the first one was delicious, but it was almost more like a pozole mm -hmm. than a chili, which doesn't make it any less delicious. That's not necessarily what you perceive as, yeah. as chili. Same thing when you have tofurkey or tofee, or whatever it is they do. Chili. It's like going to see Aliens 2, expecting to see a horror movie. <laughs> do you have anything Icelandic that you still like to cook? Yes, I do. I cook a lot of things, well, a number of things. I, my favorite thing to cook is fish cakes. Uh, What's in that? Fish. <laughs> Actually, I, I use a frozen Icelandic haddock because Icelanders don't eat cod uh, because they sell it to Portugal. Uh, I mean, you eat salt cod occasionally if you want to eat traditional food, but Icelanders won't eat cod. Um, and I buy frozen Icelandic cod. It's still on the cod. Yeah, right. <laughs> because it's fresher than so called fresh main haddock. I mean, fresh main fish is fresh, it's all been shipped to, Port, uh, to Boston where the value is added because Maine has a third world economy. And then it's shipped, shipped back here and sold, so fresh Maine fish is at least three days old. So I just buy frozen Icelandic haddock, which is frozen and shipped. I grate that with a, with a grate some onion into it, an egg, a little bit of uh, clam juice as I've got it, and some, a little bit of flour, but more a little bit of starch starch and I just simmer, saute it, scoop it out in spoons and saute it in butter till it's brown. So it's, it's real simple and a little black pepper in it. Do you wash down with bread and then? Uh, no, I usually save that for when I'm eating rotten shark meat. <laughs> <laughs> Fermented shark's meat. Yeah, yeah. But no, I like it. Actually, I don't drink much, but uh, I like it with a good crisp white, if you know, but uh, uh, it can't be. Uh, stuff like black death. Kind of uh, it's really great stuff, but it just kills your power. Yeah. It's good for the end of the night when you're sort of spouting yeah, exactly. that yeah. darkness. When you're heading into oblivion <laughs> and you just want to yeah. forget that meal. Yeah. I really liked it when you said really fish cake. Off the chainsaw. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Half the audience went, ooh, cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, sweet bread. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And I make lamb stew a lot too, which I really like. It. Or a nice one's called lamb soup, but uh, lamb stew. I like. It's hard to get good lamb. <laughs> well, even New Zealand lamb. Yeah, I mean, it's because in America, it's lamb if it's a year old. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in Maine, actually, fun. we're doing some pretty cool stuff up north. These like lamb, lambs living on islands, yeah. like yeah. eating seaweed and like you know, really you get all that like in the flavor of the lamb. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, we bought a lamb that weighed uh, two years ago. We bought a lamb that was raised on the tunic, uh, and that was really good. I hope everybody's taking this in. You're at a <laughs> you're at a comic convention. Yeah. Talk, walk, yeah. With Leatherface is telling you about how the best way to raise lamb yeah. is. There is no yeah. bigger difference. <laughs> than yeah. 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 You're not going to get this in New York or Boston, okay? This is it. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of what else do you want to hear about meat from? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That brings up my follow-up question, which is, can you give us a story from when you were on the set of Tuscus Chainsaw Massacre? Well, you know, it's interesting, something, I, you know, I just did this book, and one of the things that my editor found that he wanted me to put in the book after I'd submitted the manuscript was that Toby, uh, Toby Hooper, who was the director of the film, claimed that 
key that the film was so gruesome to film that he, he never ate meat during the entire filming. Really? And that, that Del Toro, the director, it, that Chainsaw turned him into a vegetarian. Okay. And I, I didn't want to put that in because I, you know, that's just, that's just a director being mouthy. And my editor said, oh, you got to put that in, that's so neat. So I added afterwards, on the other hand, I never saw Toby avoid the barbecue when we were filming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I can tell you that we actually, in the dinner scene, which was the worst part of the filming, since we're on a food theme here, it was the worst part of the filming because it was a 26 hours straight shooting without stopping. And uh, it was so hot, it was 100 degrees, give or take, every day. But in, in the dining room of the house, we had, we had heavy black curtains set up to, on, the, on the windows because we shot also at daylight. And we had all the lights up, so it was probably, if it was 100 degrees outside, it was 120, 125 inside. And we had real sausage and real head cheese. And we didn't have anything to replace the sausage, but oh, the yeah. head cheese we had to switch out about every two hours because it would just turn. Yeah. Uh, and then we had a dead chicken, which was a prop. And there was only one dead chicken, so it just got worse and worse and worse. <laughs> and I was the worst smelling thing. I, we, we broke for lunch at one night, you know, during that night at about two in the morning. And, and they wouldn't clean my costume. They wouldn't take it to a laundry or clean it because they were afraid either it would change color or they'd lose part of it. The laundry would lose it. So I wore the same wool suit for 28 days straight. <laughs> and, when we were breaking for lunch, and I, I came out and got in line, and of course the crew always eats first, so I got in line behind one of the crew guys, and he looked at me, turned around and said, get out of the line. <laughs> you smell so bad, we don't want you anywhere near us. So I actually found, this is so pitiful, I, I found the doctor on set. There was a doctor on set because he had designed Grandpa's face, and so he wasn't there as a doctor, he was there because he wanted to make sure that Grandpa's face worked. Because the guy in the grandpa face was 20 years old, but he had the face of a 16-year-old. And so he was there to oversee that makeup, that nine hours to get him into his face. And so I went to Dr. Barnes and asked him, and he had some, I asked him if he had any nausea pills. So I took some nausea pills and went and found a nice quiet spot and just lay down. I decided I wasn't going to eat dinner. <laughs> and we called that shoot, by the way, The Last Supper. <laughs> I can see why. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. That might be the only moment in history where somebody went, aww, to Leatherface. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy, he's just trying to get by. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of food, I can tell you that uh, most films have what's called craft services, which is a different it's food. Craft services are the food that is on the set all the time. Because you, you know, you get hungry, your sugar goes down, you need something to bite on. So there is usually this caterer who brings lunch, but then craft services is a different, different people. In our case, craft services, because we had no money, craft services was whatever was left over from lunch was craft services. And one day during the filming, we, we discovered early on that the guy who we leased the house from had two acres of marijuana growing in his backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so one day during the filming, uh, the caterer brought oh, we, yeah. a couple of big flats of wonderfully tasty brown milk. <laughs> <laughs> and so when we finished lunch and she left, she left the flats because that was all that was left. And so, of course, we all got really stoned. <laughs> and then you'd forget you were stoned, and you'd forget yeah. the brownies were spiked, and then you'd get real hungry, and you'd go back, and, oh, this all oh, that's supposed to be. <laughs> and a friend of mine was on the set, and he claimed that, because it, it took a long time anyway to set up shots, and then it took really long when we were stoned. And, uh, and by stoned, he means um, just in a really good mood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He claims that I was sitting on the front porch with the seat tip, my chair tipped back, my feet up on the rail, and I was chanting, time has no meaning. <laughs> <laughs> what I really enjoyed is Leatherface just stopped halfway through the movie and went, I mean, what are we even doing? <laughs> What's life about? Yeah, what are we Let's just let him go. <laughs> 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 well, you have to give me screaming yellow zombies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
Did you ever hear Screaming Ella Zonkers? No. They were the first dollar food. They were pop, it was just caramel popcorn in a bag that had, there wasn't a square inch of space in the ba on the bag that didn't have writing on it because they knew that when you got high and you got stoned, you Happy. just wanted to read. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd get a bag of zonkers and you'd eat the zonkers and yeah. read for hours. You could all Remember that? Reading and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, other face did read. Yeah. <laughs> reading. Yeah. reading. Yeah. Well, I think on that visual, um, <laughs> it's a good point that we have we've tallied the votes. All right. Are we excited? Yeah. 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 I will say this, it was exceptionally close, okay? Except for uh, the dog person. Uh, that, no, I'm sorry, you did not do very well. I apologize. It was all in presentation. You were yeah, great you on everything a, else. You got a 12 on presentation. Yeah. With the, the massive dildo. <laughs> and by dildo, he means. Um, <laughs> I got nothing. There's actually nothing know. like an actual dildo. Yeah, they'll tell you about it. They probably bought one after they had it. Carlos! <laughs> Hey, let's give a big round of applause. 